Good morning. Uh, my name is Lynn Lewandowski. I'm an educational technology specialist at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Our presentation today is about creating posters with PowerPoint. And um, as has been said before, this slide deck is available right now to you. You can go to the Infoscope and the Media and Production Services website. Um, you will see several links on that homepage. One of them is the Poster Printing Services page and from that page there's a small link that says creating posters with PowerPoint and it's available. You can open that up in a PDF reader and follow along with me today or you can download that at a time later for yourself. The objects and uh, objectives and topics today, we are going to discuss some of the pre-planning for your poster, discuss some of the PowerPoint tools and navigation you can use to create your poster that you may or, or may not be aware of that can add a little bit of uh, personality, a little bit of color contrast, and some organizational structure to your, to your poster as well. Um, I do have several examples of posters embedded right within this um, presentation. Several of the posters, they, they come out good. There's one that came out absolutely stunning as a printed poster. Um, the digital display, just because it's a little bit smaller than the actual print, is, it leaves you, you might be looking at it a little bit going, really? But if you look at the concept of it, it's, it's really a unique poster. Um, I would also like to have some hands-on time with the laptops. I did bring about 12 laptops in, or if you have your own laptop here with PowerPoint, you're welcome to, to get into that as well. Um, first of all, pre-planning, or what I call your best defense against disaster. And the reason I use that title is because there have been occasions where we will get a poster that comes in and it is designed on a normal sized piece of paper. And it is sized to a normal sized piece of paper. Now when you're blowing that up to a 20 by 30 inch piece of paper, what happens is you start to see all the little pixelations or the little squares of color and it starts to look, if you remember back to the days of art history class, the Monet painting where you stand real close and it looks like one thing and you stand way back and it looks like something totally different. That's the type of effect you get. On a scientific poster, that's something you really want to avoid. Uh, the general formatting guidelines. Your poster should be readable from at least three feet away. Um, you should avoid large, extensive, deep color backgrounds. And that's not because it's not pretty, but what happens is with all of that ink going on the paper, you tend to get that real wavy texture within your poster, and then it gets difficult to read, it gets difficult to hang. It just, it, it, it's, for all of your work that you're putting in, it just kind of leaves an undesirable effect. And it's something that we really can't control coming out of the printer. So if you're going to use a color background, which is encouraged, just keep it light, keep it a, you know, something to the lighter side. Um, balance your text in your images. If you have too much of one, too much of the other, you run the risk of either losing your, uh, losing your viewer because it's a lot to read and they're moving on from poster to poster to poster, or you may run into the instance where your image just doesn't convey absolutely everything that you need it to convey. So you, you want to make sure that you've got everything covered in between those two. Um, two fonts is a great way to go. If you go three, four, five, it might get a little bit confusing to the viewer and you do, you know, you want to keep that viewer experience is in mind. Um, we are going to talk about this tab in just a few minutes, but there is a design tab in PowerPoint. And the absolute first step, I can't emphasize this enough, is we're going to show you how to size your slide to your finished design. Customarily at MCW, our research posters are sized to uh, 42 by anywhere between 56 and 60 inches. So that's basically three and a half by five feet in a nutshell. Um, you want to start with your, size, your slide sized to that size. We do offer two printing dimensions. One you see all the time in the hallways on easels, the classic 20 by 30. Usually if we have a guest speaker coming in, that's the size poster that we print. Um, if you go to any poster fairs, um, the, the best example is the Pathways Scholarship 
forum where all of the students create a poster to show off their research that they've spent two to three years collecting. Um, they will have, those posters are 42 by 60 in, inches. Um, I like those because it's minimal trimming for me, but that's purely selfish on my part. So, um, photos and visuals. Before you take any pictures, you will want to set your camera settings on certain settings. Um, some of these are set within um, the camera. Some will be readable within the software itself. Generally speaking, most of your camera images that come off will be at a resolution that's suitable for printing, uh, which is 200 dots per square per inch. Um, photos should look good. You should be sized out at about 5 by 7 inches or about 1,000 by 1,400 pixels. We will, we will address how to find that in just a minute. Um, if you are going to a screen, if you know this poster is going to be displayed on a screen only, that DPI resolution can be a little bit lower and you will see that in just a minute as well. Um, one thing to consider about as you pre-plan all of your photos is think about am I going to use this photo to replace some text and you want to kind of have that pre-planned so you know in your photo shoot which photos to take. Confirming your image size. This is not done in PowerPoint. This is actually done on the image itself. So once you have your image on your computer, you can right click on the image. You will see a menu that will pop up. And in that menu, usually at the bottom is an item called properties. Properties are basically the, the who, what, and where about the picture. If you click on details, as I've, as I've got highlighted here, you can see my image dimensions for this particular image, and I don't remember which one that I, I drew here. But the dimensions are 138 by one, uh, I'm sorry, 1,038 by 159 pixels. So this was a very wide, very narrow picture. Um, and you kind of have, you think about, you know, back in 1,000 by 1,400 pic pixels is, a pretty good five by seven. So you can see this was probably close to seven inches, but maybe a little bit shy of, of the, uh, or very shy of the uh, five inches in height. Um, the resolution is 96. So would it print very well? There. It would be a little dotted, probably a little bit fuzzy looking, but in a pinch, you know, or if it was sized down a little bit smaller. So. Um, you can, again, you can find this by right-clicking on the image. You can go down to properties and then in the details. Um, if you have to change any of your camera, camera's images, you should probably, you know, find somebody that can help you adjust your camera settings because most digital cameras nowadays, you can adjust how many pixels you're shooting at, your, um, you know, any of your settings in there in the, in the menu of your camera. Text. Your general guide for text, a 100 point font is going to come out to about one inch in height. So if you think about it that way, you know that your title is probably going to be a little bit bigger knowing that you're going to have about 42 inches to deal with. That kind of gives you an idea on where to start. Now the other beauty part about this is you can take some of the thought process out knowing if you set up your slide size previously, so it's already set to a 42 by 60 inch piece of paper, it's automatically, you're, you're going to have, it's going to force you to adjust it is what it's going to do. Because if you put a 12 point font on a slide that size, you will not be able to read it unless you really, really zoom in. So, and you know 100% is 100%. So you want to, you know, keep in mind, just watch that slide size, let your eye be the judge. Um, you also uh, want to keep in mind font. font, Helvetica and Sans Serif Bold read very, very well from a distance. Um, they're very simple fonts, they print very well, and they are, generally speaking, if you look at the style of that font, if you don't like those fonts, or if you want to find something just a little bit softer looking, whatever, you, whatever your personal style is, find something right in that order 
Um, if you go to like the more curly, the more curvy fonts, those tend to start printing, you'll get like a bubble effect around the letter. And sometimes that doesn't bother people, uh, sometimes it does. It all depends again on, on your personal style, the message you want to convey. Um, keeping in mind to, you know, the reader, because you will be standing in front of the poster explaining it, but you're going to have, you know, you could have 100 people come back, come past and start asking you about your poster. And as always, spell check and proof early and often. When we create, when we start creating and organizing your content, we use the blank slide layout. The title is divided into different sections, the title, then underneath the names, the department, institution, city, whatever is pertinent information to your research. In terms of the entire poster, your information should be divided into specific boxes, uh, introduction, your message, your results, summaries, and any acknowledgments you may have. And interspersed through there, you can lay out your photos, anything like that. So with that being said, getting things organized, the first thing on your slide that you can do to help you is by using the View tab. Uh, this is a picture of a Windows ribbon. The View tab is located towards the right. And what this allows you to do is set up a couple of guides for yourself so you don't have to, you know it's going to be on. And what you can do under the show box is you've got ruler, you've got grid lines, and you've got guides. And as you turn those on, you can actually have those guides appear. Now what's really nice about that is you see those guides on screen. You will not see them in the printed version. So you could leave them on. If you know how to turn them on, you know how to turn them off. So you can go back before you submit your poster for printing turn those guides off and get a very realistic image of what your poster is going to look like in its printed format. You can select the distance of the spacings by simply clicking on this little box in the lower right and that will open up a menu that allows you to actually adjust how far your guides are apart. So they're set at one inch in my next slide, but you can actually go smaller or larger. Um, here's an example of what a slide looks like with alignment guide set. So I'll go back one and I'll show you. We've got the ruler and we've got grid lines showing and then we also have the guides. So this is what your slide blank obviously minus this title would look like. The tools that you can use. And this is a fun one. These are kind of nice because you can actually apply these to your PowerPoints to really customize your PowerPoints as well. We're simply using them in a large setting for, for this presentation. Slide size is done under your page setup. And that should match the finished size of your poster. If you start with that, you will have a quality printed poster. So you want to set that Customary slides, size for your slide is going to be 42 by 56 to 60. Somewhere in there we can make that dimension work. Uh, your slide theme or background, you have a couple of options on this. Your slide themes, and we all know them, are simply set under this large themes tab and you have a variety of about, oh I bet you there's about 25 or 30 different slide themes in there. Um, you can also use what we call the background styles and I was going to show, put a bunch of pictures up but then I thought no, I'm going to show this to them live because there's a lot of very good options in there. The background styles allows you to do a gradient style, you can adjust the color, uh, you can put pictures in if you choose as your background and you can lighten them up, um, anything like that. Um, the color option is another interesting one that people, I don't know if they really realize, but that is separate from your background styles and you can actually change your background style, you can change your font. Where you see this really effective is if you choose to use a stock design, you can go in and click on colors, you can change 
the color scheme of that stock background to make it a little more personal. And it, it's a very interesting way of, of presenting the content and doing everything. Text, fonts, and effect. Um, and that includes, you know, uh, maybe putting some dimensions, some shadow on the effect. One of the tricks that I do is I will put a slight shadow on any image, very, very slight, just enough to give it a little dimension to kind of make it, to give that trick the eye into thinking it's standing out just a little bit, but it gives a little bit of a layered design to what is otherwise a two-dimensional presentation. Your text and your text boxes. Text boxes are inserted under the insert tab. Once they are in, you can type your text in and you can uh, grab that text box and move it around and slide it anywhere in using your grids to line everything up nice and neat. You can format text boxes with color by right clicking or selecting the format and the text box. Um, you can use this to create a, an effect of dimension. Within your, within your text box. You can also use it for complementing or depending on your color scheme, contrasting colors. Excel charts. Many scientific posters have data that was aggregated in Excel. You can use Excel, um, and I did not go into this real heavy, but in Excel you can actually draw charts out. Uh, when you do create uh, graphs for Excel, after you're done in Excel, it's a simple copy out of Excel and paste it into the poster um, and then you'll want to kind of, you know, using your guides and your grid lines, make sure that you're resizing everything according to uh, what it needs to be sized to depending on your images, where your text boxes are, things like that. Photos. You can insert and it's best instead of doing a copy and paste, use the insert menu, picture, from file and then select the file for your, for your um, image or your photo. You can use one side of the corner to readjust the size and keep the aspect ratio. And sometimes, I'm sure we've all done this, I know I have, where you say, oh, the photo needs to be skinnier. So you grab it right in the middle and you just make it skinnier and then all of a sudden everything is like this. Or, oh, that doesn't fit right, so I'm just going to make it a little shorter and then everything looks a little bit more um, rotund shall I say, than it needs to be. Um, you want to make sure resize using the corner. That way your aspect ratio stays the same. Your photo may come out a little smaller. You may have to jog a few other things around, but your photo will stay where you want it. Um, you can also move that photo in the middle by clicking and dragging. Um, there are also um, settings to adjust the color to adjust the brightness and then to crop the photo as well. If you come out with a photo that's this big and you only need the top half of it, you can just take that whole bottom portion of it out. If you want to preview your photos, this is a good trick. I use this a lot prior to printing them because I'm the one when these, I, I will be in the next couple weeks, I will be seeing anywhere between 70 and 90 Pathways posters coming across my desk and I will, if I don't print them, I will at least process them and I will look through and make sure everything's lined up where it needs to be. Um, one of the major tricks that I use is at the bottom right, there's a zoom tool and I like to take a look at some of those photos and I just simply go in and I zoom, I make sure this setting is set at 100% and then I get over, I scroll over and I make sure those pictures are crisp and clean on the screen. If they're crisp and clean on the screen, they will print just fine. And again, when we're in the live PowerPoint, this is something that, that we'll all be able to kind of play with and touch and feel and everything like that. Putting it all together, once your content is organized into text boxes, your photos and graphs are set, you are simply going to use your rulers to line everything up. Do be mindful of margins. Margins are set, in our case, at the printer. Now, I have a few, you know, back pocket tricks that I use if I want to override the margin. Um, quite honestly, they, they don't have anything to do with the poster designer, which would be yourself. That's just kind of one of my back pocket tricks that I use where I kind of play and, and 
make some settings a little bit different and make the margins go away if you don't want one. Um, but you do have to be mindful. On most printers, the default margin is a half inch. That's as small as I can get it on our printer. So you will have a half inch of white around your poster. Um, that will still leave you, if you've got a half inch, that's still going to leave you an actual, actual print diameter of like 41 by anywhere between 55 and 59, depending on what that length was that you set on your poster. Here are a couple examples of posters, and I'm going to show these to you, and so I chose most of them for a couple reasons, either the color contrast, um, some of them I chose just because I thought they were really cool and unique and just were fun to look at. Um, this first one I chose for a couple reasons. Um, I love the different text boxes and you can see how this student did an actual gradient of colors and what that does on the print or on the screen is it kind of gives you that illusion of depth and kind of it comes out at you a little bit but it still allows the text to be read nice and neat. So you can see this was one text box and they did insert the Medical College of Wisconsin logo in on both sides. Some do both sides, some just do one. That's a personal preference. Um, this text box complements. They used a white center instead. And what was very interesting is the results took up two columns. Her header takes up one and then she's got subheaders out. So you can see her different sections and you can see these were all done as different text boxes. You can also see several charts that she put in out of Excel. So I thought this was an excellent example of a nice, clear, pretty, concise, readable poster. This next poster, it is from a distance on the screen, albeit it's a little bit interesting. I loved it. And I loved it because this student took the concept of instead of using the photos separately, they used them as the background. Now you can see there's a few things that possibly could be adjusted in this, but the whole idea of this poster was disaster preparedness. And if you look closely at all of the pictures, there's some Hurricane Katrina pictures in there, aerial from the ground. So it really gets the point across of, how devastating a disaster is and how much more devastating it is if you are not prepared. So you know, this one, it was stunning. It was absol absolutely stunning printed. It was just the most beautiful poster. Um, I, I wish I still had it. She has it. When I print them, I send them back to the students. I never see them printed again. I get to keep the JPEGs just because I hoard JPEGs. I don't know. I just, I just, I, I love these posters. So. Uh, but I did want to give you this one as an example of using pictures as your background. Um, maybe lightened up a little bit. This one had a little bit darker, more unique color scheme. And you can see she actually had a background color that involved the blue and the green that comes out in most of the pictures as well. So she did a great job coordinating the colors. This next one, simple. To the point, from last week, the mobile app challenge pitch event, and this was a schedule that they did um, so people knew when they were presenting for their mobile app challenge that we did about a week ago. Um, so you can see this is just simple tables. That's all they did, but they sized their tables in the size appropriate to the poster. So they started out with a huge table and huge font, and that's how we got this poster done. Uh, one more, this was done by a student, and this was another Pathways that I thought was outstanding. Um, you've got two, uh, two colors, one font, a bold, and a regular, and then he's sectioned out really nice. This student chose to use a rounded corner on the text box, which you can style in your text box, very nice. Um, one logo on the top and he actually did a logo that didn't have a background so it looks like that logo you know matches in and absorbs the background color that he used up here and I also very much like how he sectioned everything off so you can totally see uh, every you know all of the details of his research and all of his outcomes and any pictures anything like that that he had. The last three I'm going to show you um, and I this is a, a shameless plug. This one was mine. 
Um, we had a poster session last year at the American Association of Clinical Anatomists. Uh, we worked with the anatomage table, which is our 3D anatomy table. It lives down in the form and function lab. Um, there were three of us that submitted and three of us that were accepted to do posters. And what we did was we got a thematic thing going on. So all of the MCW posters had this same type of green bar along the side. And we all had our Medical College of Wisconsin. And when you go to a poster presentation, especially off campus, a lot of times what they do is they give you a poster number and they give you a spot where you will be displaying your poster. And we got that ahead of time. So we were actually, in a, we were able to insert that as part of the poster so we didn't have to have this big post-it note up, you know, big purple post-it note on top of a, a green, nice looking poster that you spent a lot of time on. So that was nice to have a heads up on that. Um, but you can see how we sectioned this one off. This was mine. I've got a larger section here. Um, and then what I had four pictures that I inserted and they were all done you know, separately in one text box. And then you can see, here's an example of a little shadow that I put on the back. This next one was one of the topics that a physician used to teach. A very similar layout, different number, very similar in terms of the header and our logo. Um, the pictures that were used here were actually screenshots that were taken from the anatomage table. So those are digital pictures. Those were not taken, you know, someone didn't do that during an actual procedure or anything like that. Um, and it, w the whole point of this was how to be able to manipulate this 3D technology to teach about how mus uh, muscles layer over one another. Last but not least, which was a uh, fluoroscopically guided injection procedure. And again, this one, what this author did was they took and they moved this line over, centered their objectives, and used the images on the outside. Again, these images, and you can tell by the edge, were actually taken off the computer. So they were actual screenshots from the computer. This was not camera or digital camera work or anything like that. We used a little snip tool in Windows 7 and took these images right from the table. Um, they look like x-rays, but they are actually part of the software package. So this was not somebody that we knew that was actually going through this. This was just um, an example of, of what this software can do and what type of imagery we have. Once your poster is done, um, you can submit your poster via the Infoscope site, uh, Media and Production Services. There is a poster printing services webpage, and it's got a little form for you to fill out. And you can actually upload your file to that site, and from there, I will get it. Um, I prefer to get your PowerPoint, because that way I can take one last look for alignment, because more sets of eyes are better. Uh, just to see what's going on and see how everything lines up. And if everything looks good, I go ahead and I make the necessary changes and, and file format changes and things that I need to make to get it to print. And then I contact you that it is printed. We do recommend that you, uh, if you wish to use on-campus display, uh, we are a good resource for you. Um, for off-campus display, um, you might be interested in looking at one of these services provided, and those are also listed on that web page. We do not offer services such as lamination. Uh, we do not put anything on foam backing to give it stability or anything like that. We just, we don't have uh, that, that amount of people that, that we can do this. Uh, we essentially offer your basic poster, we do have glossy paper that we can print on, um, but we are more of an in-house type service. Um, there are some rates that apply to that basically to cover the cost of our, you know, ink and paper and things like that. So, that's a lot of talking. Any questions for starters? Our turnaround is customarily, I tell people, three to five days. Um, depending on my workload, depending on what's going on. Um, if I have, I do administer exams and I do administer the learning management system here as well. Um, 
so depending on what's going on on those two fronts, sometimes I get it turned around a little faster. I would budget, you know, three to five business days. Okay, uh, I don't see any other, qu oh, one more question, yes sir. Um, well, you know, I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> yes, well, what customarily happens, again, because of my workload and also um, in the interest of, you know, I want to make sure your poster is for you. What I customarily do is I'll give you a call and I'll say this is, is what's going on here and I will have you resize it. I've, I've talked people through getting that page size set correctly, but that one I do have to send back to the author. If there's something small, if I notice a picture is not lined up or there's something that's bleeding off into a, into a margin, that I will nudge and that I'll move around. Cause that, and it does happen, just invariably it happens. But when the poster is sized to a, a traditional you know, piece of paper, and I, that is where I have to say, I need you to redo this for me, please. And, uh, with a little education, I've had good luck with that. I actually think I've only had about two or three people that have sent me something like that. So I've been pretty lucky that way. People are pretty good about that. Yes? I have a question. Um, I put together papers for our department of faculty and department of radiology. And I just find myself a lot of times just spending, wasting a lot of time resizing images. Yes. Um, these are um, scans, digital scans of, of patients. And I just, you know, my first pass. I mean, I kind of always like it to look good as I go along. Maybe that's a problem. So I'm always resizing the images, and, you know, just, I don't mean, I mean, you know, dragging and making them bigger and smaller. I do that a lot. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to just, I don't know, in terms of the layout, I always have problems with that. I just spend a word amount of time kind of rechanging the layout. And I kind of is there a way to just simplify it or just approach it differently? Do you work a lot with it? Enough. What I would do in your case is I would set up in PowerPoint, I would set up three or four templates. I do have templates that I work off. And take a look at, you know, what you have. You know, if you know you have three or four, you know, it's that efficiency of experience type thing. You know, you might have so many pictures coming for this, there's so many pictures, or you might just ask how many images do you have, how much text do you have, and that way, you know, once you have that slide size to the correct size, get your grids thrown on there, and then you can start really lining up and seeing what's going on, and from there, you know, it's, it, it's tough to really customize it because you are working with individual pieces, you know, you might be working with four or five text boxes and four or five images, and they are individual pieces. Now, in terms of navigating, always remember you can shift and you can click on certain items and bats move things around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, one way to kind of minimize that. Lining everything up, that's more done on an individual basis, and that's where, you know, your, your three or four templates or maybe do some, you know, just some pre-questioning of what is the content, how many pictures, you know, how many text boxes or how much text or, you know, something like that. And a lot of times I get a lot of people all at once for me and then as they're moving on, oh, we're going to add an image. Yes. We're going to add five images. We're going to, it's just kind of redoing it. Now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always a tough one. We've, we've run across that where, oh, the last minute change and the last minute change. Um, what I found again is pre-communication. You know, this is, and I, I always, you know, frame the pre-communication as this is what's going to look best. This is what's going to show off your work. And I, you know, that that little bit of guidance right in there. And uh, don't trash your original file. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't trash the original file. Um, yeah, that can get tough when it's last minute, um, you know, depending on, on what's happening and what you have in there, you know, that might be the same thing. I've headed off a lot of problems with pre-consults and just saying, okay, this is what you have, this is what your topic is. 
how many images are going to go in here and you know just kind of give them that general space to think about it and then once the, the people that I have consulted with once we throw those guides up there it's like the heavens open mm -hmm. and it's oh wow I can do that I can see that so um, yeah that's always an interesting challenge so um, okay um, if anybody oh another question Seema Yes. I don't mind that concept. Um, it does offer some on-screen advantages. You know, you can work at a higher magnification when you're working at 42 by 56. When you've got that set there, you're customarily working at 15 to maybe 22 or 23 percent magnification. When you're working at 21 by 30, you can work at you know 50, maybe 60 or 70 percent magnification, depending on what you're working with. Where that shows up is in most fonts. What you wind up getting is that bubbly kind of nature around the font that is very, very difficult to avoid because the font setting only stretches so far. Um, if you set at the original size right off the bat, you won't get as much of that font stretching and that bubble look around the font. Um, that too, again, that can be somewhat minimized by the font choice. If they choose um, something that's very square, um, some people would call it boring, but um, you know, like an Arial font, a Helvetica, Sans Serif, that type of thing, those fonts just, they read better they also print better. So sometimes if they're going to do that, I will recommend that you stay within a certain font family. And sometimes they'll, you know, people will be, well, I like a rounder font, I like a prettier font, but those prettier rounder fonts are the ones that really don't like to stretch. So it's a six and one half a dozen of the other personal preference type thing. So, and we've printed posters that have been half size and we print them to 200%. We've printed those successfully as well. So be that as it may. You know, that's, it's always the interesting part about this, uh, this class and this type is, you know, your presenters, your students, they've put all that hard work and that scientific work and the, the research and this is the artsy end. This is where, you know, yeah, you are presenting research, you're presenting hard data, but you get to make it pretty. And that's nice. That's, that's fun to do. So, you know, we want to, give everyone the tools and make sure they know this is the plus, this is the minus that's going to get it to look where you want it to look. Okay, so I have the standard top level PowerPoint slide. When you open up a new PowerPoint, the first thing you always, always see is the title slide because PowerPoint thinks, hey, I'm making a slideshow and you're, no, PowerPoint's not making a slideshow today. PowerPoint is going to make a poster. So the first thing you can do is under uh, home, you can go ahead and in the second grouping, you see how your, your uh, ribbon here is grouped. You've got very light lines. All of them are like that. You can go to layout and you can change that slide layout to blank. So now you have a blank slide. That slide has nothing preformed on it. There's no boxes. It's just like a big old plain piece of paper just waiting to be designed on. The next thing you want to do is in your design tab, you want to go to page setup. And in this page setup, you can increase your width and your height. So I'm going to take this out to 56 inches wide. I'm just going to use and 42 inches high. So that's going to give me a landscape style portrait where I've got it shorter than it is wide, if that makes sense to you. Next order of business. We don't have any data really to play with today, but we can play with a lot of colors. We can play with a lot of backgrounds. 
So we're going to stay in our design. Oh, actually, let's go into our view tab and let's turn on our ruler, our grids. You can see our little grids here and our guidelines. So you can see all of that is turned on. If you wish to adjust that, in the View tab under the Show section, there is a small faint box with an arrow. And you can open that up to a new menu. And that is where you can tell it it will snap objects to grid, which means it auto, it kind of auto lines everything up. This can be good or bad. So think about how much control you want to have over this. Okay, I am a control freak. I want to have, I, I want it to go where I want it to go, not where it tells me it's going. So. Um, I personally would uncheck that. Yes. Okay, are you in the view tab? Okay, go to the show section. And then there's a faint gray, yes. And then which one is it? Customize? Right under show, if you just click on this faint box, this will show up, grid and guidelines. And then I haven't changed anything beyond that yet. Um, you can also, what's really nice is you can, control your grid spacings. So I've got, I had mine in the, in the show, I had mine set to one inch. You can set it to a half inch, however you wish to do it. The, the spacing? Yes. That spacing is totally up to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so back in design. Yes, sir. What makes you decide one of half inch? That, that amount I would decide based, based on the size of my presentation. I've got a 42 by 56 inch presentation. I'm going to line everything up on the inch. If I had a smaller presentation, I might line up everything on the half inch. You know, I'd want everything because everything's going to be sized smaller. I'm looking at the overall size of my object. You know, an object, a text box on a 56 inch wide poster. A text box might be five inches wide. So I'm going to use the inch to line that up. Correct. Yes. I would, you know, you can start with an inch. You can adjust that because, again, those grids, those are something you see on the digital screen. Those are not something you see on the print screen. Those are strictly for your alignment and your, your visual cue. Okay, so let's go back to design and let's go in quickly to background styles. It is on your far right and you can click on that. You see some stock styles here as you cruise around and aren't they pretty? I love that blue. I really do. But you know what? We can make it even more customizable. Right underneath all those pictures, you can click on Format Background. And you have a choice of a solid fill, a gradient fill. You can use a picture or a texture fill. Hint, hint, if you want to put a picture as your background, you can put that in there. Now, you can also preset your colors. So you've got all kinds of choices there. You can do a linear a radial, so you can change the shape of your gradient. You can also put in more stops by adding or subtracting. The active stop has an orange border around it. You can change the base color. So you can see I have two colors here. And I'm going to change that base color to a blue. Can you yes, I can. If you wish to change your gradient color, I'm going to direct your attention up to the screen for just a second. I'm still in the format background. Now I have three gradient stops set. Do you see them? I'm going to click on a gradient stop and you'll see an orange border around that. I'm going to go down to color right underneath it and I'm going to make this green. Now if I click on this gradient stop, this color 
affects that gradient stop. If I click on this gradient stop, and so on and so forth. So you can change the color of that. You could play with this all day, I bet. Yeah. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> There's the, you can do the fluorescent colors, too, if you really want to grab someone's attention. You know, you could have, like, highlighter marker yellow. Off you go. Um, now, when you're done, the one caution to you, after you've done all of this custom work, please promise me. You will click on Apply to All so all of your slides match. Please. This, right now, yeah, right now we see, yeah, in this case it would be one. If you use this for a PowerPoint, please click Apply to All. So you are correct with a poster. Although I have had PowerPoints come through with five slides with five individual posters. Yes, it's been done. Now, I just did a reset because of that. I just didn't want to see it. The other thing I'd like to show you, and I would like you all to go into your preset designs. Pick something loud. Pick something fairly obnoxious. And then what I'd like you to do is I would like you to go over Right next to the immediate left of background styles, you see colors. And that's going to pull up a coordinated color menu for you. So this automatically coordinates it for you, but you can see how this actually will change the color. And I might not have picked a very good example here. Yeah, I don't think I did. Okay, I'm going to pick a different example now. Here we go. And you can see, honestly, you don't even have to click on them. You can just drag. And in this case, you can see this lower bar changing. Or you can see how they change. So you can do a lot of customization work in there. No, the costs are the same. What I will caution you on, and I'm going to use the, the background that I have up there right now, is it's a pretty background. It's a very beautiful blue, and it would grab a lot of attention, but it would also come out very wrinkly because the amount of ink that it takes to get this dark blue background is, is enormous, and what happens is that ink does not dry evenly, so it's just like... It's the same thing as if you spill some water on a piece of paper. Will the paper dry? Yes. Will it come out like it did before you spilled water on it? No. It's just, it's the same thing. And these are inkjet printers that we're using. So there is, you know, it, it is a damp ink that goes on there. It, it doesn't spray on, obviously, 100% dry. It dries quickly. It only takes about, on regular paper, it takes about two minutes for these posters to dry. It doesn't take long at all. But... That being said, it still does wrinkle and it does dry unevenly. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. The colors that we're clicking, um, you know, we're changing the color. Is that why am I clicking that? That would be the background for your poster, just to help you set up some okay. colors. Okay. Right, exactly. That would be reflected in your text colors, in any other border colors or anything like that. Yeah. And the best way I can describe that is if you look up at some of these stock designs, you see that there's different colors in those designs. And those colors will change to reflect what you choose here in, in the colors menu if you choose to change that. So... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can see as I change colors, uh -huh. the border color changes a little bit. I think the third one from the left reflects the background color of the slide. I can't remember what all what they all reflect exactly. But you, that's all changeable. Uh, very quickly before, I've got to stop recording in a few minutes, but what I would like to do is see if we can insert a quick text box so you can insert. Quick text box. And when you double click, oopsie, my fingers can't type. And you can see I lucked out. I got a, a font. Now I'm at 18% down here. I got a font that actually looks like it's reading okay. So as I zoom in, we can see this font is about three quarters of an inch high because I know my grids are set at about three quarters of an inch. And that's another place that grid really helps on how far apart you set that and that may be what dictates your grid display for you is how big do you want your font. I just know mine are, that's about three quarters of an inch. So I know that if I put a ruler in real time or in a, on a real thing, that would be about a three quarter inch high font. I'm going to zoom this back out. I am going to say thank you for everything so I can say thank you into the recording. And uh, if you have any other questions, um, you can contact either uh, library systems. Uh, you can also contact media and production services. Uh, we, if you call 4357, option two, you will get somebody on either one of those lines and uh, we'll be available for your assistance. Thank you so much.